I don't know why I did this. I mean, I kind of know, but like, I also, I mean, one second, I'm just like doing some basic quick little uh, upgrades to my Ender 3. The next second, I'm up some eyeballs and prints and I'm designing this whole dual hot end setup. Let me back up. So in college, I was in an apartment that had quite thin walls, and I became a little bit worried and concerned that my neighbors were gonna get annoyed by the music of my uh, stock Ender 3 uh, stepper motor drivers. And so I, the original idea, I was just like, hey, all, you know, Christmas is coming up again. I'm gonna ask for a uh, main board that has some nice silent stepper motor drivers. And I, I already had I, this whole idea to make a dual hot end uh, in my head and so it was like okay you know if I'm gonna go ahead and get a new main board I might as well get one that has uh, five stepper motor drivers and uh, can handle two hot ends um, and then it just sort of snowballed from there into, <laughs> into this whole big thing. So here's the goal. I wanted to be able to print in two colors and I didn't want to use a two-in-one hot end because I didn't want to waste filament on a purge block. I wanted to have two separate hot ends and then have a servo switch and rock between them like this. These already exist, of course. MakerTech sells a kit for one, and Proper Printing made one on his channel. One way in which these two existing solutions differ is in how they hold the whole rocking hot end part in position. Once you switch between hot ends, you want to make sure that the hot ends are not shifting about while it's printing a layer. The MakerTech kit uses a servo to hold the hot ends in place and stop them from shifting. Proper Printing's version uses a spring-loaded bicycle mechanism, or at least I think it does. I can't really figure out how that mechanism works. A bicycle mechanism is a mechanism that has two stable states, that is two states that it won't switch out of without some sort of external input. One common example is a light switch, which will stay in the state you put it in until you put it into another state. Now I went with a bicycle mechanism, but for a while in the middle of the project, the mechanism wasn't working and I was simply using the servo to hold the hot ends in the correct position just like the MakerTech kit. This highlighted a big flaw with this approach, which is that you have to get the angle just right. If the angle is even slightly off, you'll either have some wiggle room, which isn't good for the print quality, or the server will forever be straining to reach an angle it physically can't get to because the mechanism had already pushed up against the wall, which of course causes the motor to heat. It's hard to get the motor angle just right, and you really, really what you need is for the motor to be constantly exerting a little bit of force to really hold the hot end into the right position. I tried printing a Benchy when it was just using the servo to hold things in position, and you can see the layer shifts that occurred. I think a bistable mechanism is a much nicer solution. It holds things in place, and then the motor is only needed to switch between states, but I didn't like how large the spring-loaded bistable mechanism looked. I wanted something more compact. Watching a video on bistable mechanisms by Wintergarten introduced me to the idea of a magnetic bistable mechanism, and so that's what I used. There are magnets in the walls of the stationary part, and then of course more magnets in the walls of the rocking hot end part. The magnets, of course, are attracted to each other and hold things in a state. One great thing about this mechanism is that the magnets are in their strongest when they're right next to each other. That means this mechanism is really good at holding rock solid in a state. It's also super satisfying to play with. So I spent a good number of hours in the spring of 2023 catting it all out, and in the process switched to Clipper and installed the new main board using a Remax version of the Teaching Tech rear-mounted casing. And then after many prototypes, I finally had something I could install on my printer. And so I put this together. And this is usable, but it is still a prototype. I wanted to put everything through its paces before making the final version. It was a fairly painless install, unlike this. Installing the second extruder motor was a massive pain. <laughs> I swear, these two stepper motors got together and made a comprehensive and exhaustive list of every single possible way that they could mess with me. And then they proceeded to go down that list, step item by freaking item until they had done everything on it. At first, I tried mounting them both to the uh, X arm where the uh, original extruder was. Uh, and after several failed prototypes, each of which I thought was going to work, uh, and so I installed everything with the prototype, only discovered that it didn't work. Uh, and in the process, of course, I was losing screws down this massive black hole, which conveniently led right to the main board. And since I didn't find a lot of the screws until later, there was like this constant danger of like, oh, is there gonna be a screw down somewhere in the main board area that's about to short circuit everything? Um, but after all that, after that whole fight and battle, I discovered that the 
extruders were a little bit too heavy to both have on this X arm. It was, uh, <laughs> I was a little bit worried about how the, uh, the Z motor, the stepper motor was gonna handle all that weight. And so I decided to move it up to the top of the frame. Um, and so I printed out some uh, little things to hold the stepper motors in, or the extruder motors up at the top of the frame. And then after I had all that installed, I uh, realized that it'd be better if that, if it, the, I, I need some, you know, a second filament spool holder. And so it was like, hey, why not make that into one part? And so I printed a single part that was, could hold the stepper motor and then also hold the, you know, had a, the filament spool holder on it as well. Uh, and then, and then, and then, and then finally, after every single pane, I, at one point I stripped one of the screws for the uh, extruder kit, and so I had to buy a new one. Uh, I, I finally get these things hot mounted, and then I discover that a for some, they were they were running hot. Uh, I you know somewhere between installing Glipper and setting it all up, now the extruder motors were running quite hot, and so I started trying to debug that and fix that, and that's when the proper disaster really struck. Uh, because it was during one of these tests that I believe when I was printing out basic, I think probably like a Benchy or something just to test uh, the new current settings that I'd set for these stepper motors to see if they were still running hot. Um, during one of these tests, the the printer kind of hiccup, hiccuped. And it was weird, but then it went back to printing and I'm like, okay, but it's like still going, it's still all fine. So I let it run, uh, which was uh, probably a big mistake because after the print was over, I couldn't get the Pi to communicate to the main board anymore. It was, I couldn't get a communication at all. Um, and it turned out I'd fried the main board. And with it, all five of the TMC stepper motor drivers. Um, and <laughs> I was really tempted to just call it like a fluke, a one-off, oh, it was weird, uh, but you know, I'll just order a new main board and call it, you know, just like a uh, weird little incident. And I'm so glad I didn't do that. Uh, instead, I plugged everything back into the original Creality board, thinking like, yeah, if, if I'm gonna destroy something, I might as well destroy the, you know, the uh, the cheap little Creality board instead of a brand new fancy main board. So I plugged everything into that and was kind of going through everything, debugging, checking one by one, what was it? And I turned on the part cooling fan and the entire wire, the entire length of wire immediately started to smoke. And so what had happened is that even though the uh, whole installation process for the actual hot and the dual hot end assembly had been fairly painless, um, there still had been a lot of times when the, the the part cooling fan had just been dangling by its wires and that had caused the uh, connections to the part cooling fan, the wire connections to uh, eventually break and fray. And so these broken wires had then touched each other and short circuited and that destroyed my main board and then caused, that was of course causing the wire to smoke. Uh, and so that is the long story of why now it is standard procedure to hot glue or somehow secure all wire connections coming off of like fans and things like that. So I bought another main board and with that, five more stepper motor drivers. Uh, keep in mind, it has been six months since I got the first one for Christmas. It died, got it in Christmas and it died a painful short circuity death in June. Um, so that made it quite, quite a sting for sure. But I got it all up and running again and then got a bigger, beefier power supply to be able to handle both hot ends running at once, uh, which made my feel, printer feel like it turned from normal Groot into bodybuilder Groot. Uh, and then in the fall of 2023, I uh, started trying to actually do some calibrations and get some dual color prints going. And I was just making some progress with that when the semester went off a cliff and I spent the rest of the year fighting for my GPA's life. And so that brings us to this summer. Now, after months of having this printer packed away, in June, I was able to unpack it and get it up and running again. And then one morning, it, I woke up and it was just like, yep, it's been too long of having this sketchy prototype installed on the printer. Uh, now, um, as I said earlier, this is just a prototype. It's not the final version. And the big difference between the two is that in the final version, I wanna have this part cut out of aluminum. And this is the part that the hot ends are actually mounting to. Um, but for the prototype, I just cut, uh, printed it out of PLA. And so, I don't know, call me crazy, but it seems like it's a bit sketchy to have your hot ends, which are actively getting the temperatures to melt PLA, mounted to a PLA part. Uh, and like it works, right? Like I've printed, too many things with it but like what happens if there's a power loss and like suddenly the the part the hot end fans are no longer running but the 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 nozzle is still hot would enough heat be able to like go from the nozzle up to the mounting points on the other side of the uh, hot end i don't really know but i don't really want to find out right so ever since then it was like yeah priority one is getting this project done um 
But again, the whole reason I put this on here in the first place was to fully test the design and I hadn't finished doing that. I wanted to get to the point where I had a successful two color print. So I got back to doing some two color calibration tests. And when that looked pretty good, even though I was still having this massive under extrusion problem, I figured, eh, I really wanna print a Benchy. And so I printed out this monstrosity, which I feel like is a pretty good representation of what my two brain cells look like. But I managed to fix that under extrusion problem. It turned out I just had the wrong diameter filament set in Cura. Uh, and so I managed to get some, started to get some really beautiful looking calibration prints and then went ahead and printed another Benchy. Uh, it's not quite perfect. There's, especially like the chimney stack is a bit off. Uh, and there's, this is the bench I showed earlier where the, there's some layer shifts happening because this is, this prototype doesn't have a bistable mechanism. It's just the servo trying to hold it in position. Um, but it was successful enough that I felt I was ready to print out and assemble the final version. And so after printing out a couple more prototype parts, since there'd been a lot of changes to the design from the existing implemented prototype, I felt ready to print out the final parts, or at least what I wanted to be the final parts. That's not foreshadowing. Um, and uh, then I also went to the makerspace and tried to get uh, the part that the hot ends were actually mounting to. I wanted to get that milled out of aluminum. Uh, so I went to the makerspace and uh, in, unfortunately in my exhaustion, I forgot to change the rates to be slower when milling aluminum. And so the printer or the uh, mill tried to cut off too much aluminum too quickly and threw an error. And by the time the errors were finished uh, and resolved, there wasn't any more time to uh, cut it out. And so I got to that front, came home and was looking at this unmilled piece of aluminum. And I realized that if I changed the design of this whole part, I could probably print it by, or cut it out by hand. Uh, and so I printed out a template and uh, drilled out some holes and then played connect the dots with a saw. And between that and some pliers, I was able to actually get it out in kind of a rough form. Um, and then it was just a bunch of filing with a file and I also utilized the Dremel and it was actually kind of looking pretty good. And so I went on to uh, try and go for the, uh, the final assembly. And so I disassembled the whole existing hot end structure and put on all these new parts and everything's looking really good and really, really nice. And then I get within like two or three steps from the finish and I realized two major problems. The first, a long story short, this should look like this not this, the gap is wrong, that sizing is wrong, and the slot is where the, um, the part that the hot ends are mounting to goes, and the hole is where the, the PTFE Bowden tube is going. And so you want those two to be close together, and if they're far apart like they are here in the final printed part, then you'll have the Bowden tube really sort of having to turn at a sharp, hard angle, which of course uh, makes it a lot harder to push uh, the filament through. And that meant I had to reprint basically every part. Oh, sorry, that was just one of the problems. The other problem was that um, the uh, actual hot ends are not the same size as the hot ends in uh, the infusion. Uh, the hot ends that I imported in from the existing CAD Ender 3 CAD design are uh, in not the right length. And I knew this earlier on, but because there had been so many gaps and this, it was like, you know, this project had been spanning over a year and a half, I'd forgotten. Um, and so all that meant was that the uh, part cooling ducts were, weren't long enough. They weren't going to reach down so to be shooting below the hot end, they were shooting at the hot end. Uh, and so that between those two <laughs> errors, I had to reprint every single part, which raised a kind of catch-22 situation because my only other printer wasn't really currently online and ready at that time. Uh, and so I needed my existing printer that I just disassembled to fix itself uh, and print parts to fix itself, which you, I need the printer to print the printer to fix the printer. Um, and, but managed, I managed to get something put together with a, the help of some electrical tape and it actually printed really beautifully. It's like some really nice parts. And so I'm like, okay, uh, do over. We're gonna do this again. It's gonna be amazing. And then I discover with these new parts, the hot ends are hitting one of the bolts of the whole um, tool mounting thing. And uh, so that meant I had to print again. Uh, eventually though, final version was complete. See, I managed to make it quite compact, at least before the part duct is on. 
but does it print? Yes, it can, and I'm quite happy with the results. You can see it still needs a little bit of calibration done. It's a little bit lopsided, and that's the Y direction there, so a little bit more calibration to do, but I'm quite happy with how it's come out. Uh, and I said at the beginning of this video that I wasn't quite sure why I did this, and that's kind of true. I just sort of fell down this whole 3D printer ra upgrade rabbit hole, and um, man, was it a lot of work. I mean, so many prototypes, and then even more prototypes on levels of those, and then a side of prototypes with a dash of prototypes on top. Uh, and I probably spent for over 100, easily over 150 hours on this whole thing. But I am quite happy with how it, with that I, that I did it. Uh, I have all these ideas that I can now do that I couldn't can't do without a dual hot end, and so I'm really looking forward to making all those. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna post the files sometime in the future down in the description, so they might be down there. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.